Welcome to the online ministry of Faith Christian Fellowship. FCF is a dynamic word and spirit empowered church where faith and family meet. If you would like more information about our church or other media resources, please visit us at faithchristianfellowship.com. We hope you enjoy this message. to watch us tonight. If you would please um, turn with me in your Bibles. I want to just start this. I love having a couple of sessions. I don't have to uh, I don't have to pare anything down. If you would please turn your Bibles to uh, Philippians uh, chapter 4. We just want to lay some groundwork the, tonight and let's read the 8th verse of that. Oh, and by the way, we welcome everyone that's watching live stream. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you're blessed. Don't send pastor any nasty letters if you don't like what I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Look in the eighth verse of the fourth chapter of Philippians. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Did you see that? You know, I don't hear much talking. I don't hear much preaching about that scripture right there because it lays responsibility in the hearer's lap. You know, we have a seeker-friendly generation, seeker-friendly churches, and I'm not here to, to debate the right and wrong of that. But let me share this with you. Anytime you go to a church and they tell you to go home and God's going to do everything, beware. Buyer beware. Amen? <laughs> You'll get buyer's remorse on that one. Because you cannot teach the Bible. My father taught me this. You cannot teach the Bible effectively unless you lovingly put the responsibility on the hearer. Now, a lot of people want to take the Bible and beat people over the head with it. That's not the way you get that done. But you tell them that if I can get you to buy into this, then I can get you blessed. Amen? Uh, we're, in, we're from Kentucky, and you know in Kentucky we don't even know we have a football team. All we look forward to is basketball, right? And we have a coach named John Calipari, and here's what John Calipari does that's amazing. is He goes, <laughs> Pastor said he cheats. He does it legally, though, because he ain't got caught yet, right? But what happens is he goes out across America and he recruits people that are ready for the pros already, but they can't go to the pros because you have to spend one year in college before you go. But what he does, it's amazing. He gets them to buy into his system. Here's his system. Anywhere else you go, you're ready to go to the pros. You would play 40 minutes for every other program that you go but when you come to me, you're only going to play for 20 because we have a platoon system. Wow. And five are going to play 20, and the other five are going to play 20. He said, now, you could probably go to any other team in America. You could play the whole game, every game. But if you'll come here, you won't have enough fingers to put your rings on. <laughs> Amen? What he does is he gets the best players in America to come and willing to play 20 minutes because they buy into his system. If I can get you to buy into this tonight, if I can get you to see that there's not going to be enough hand, rings, or enough fingers on there for your rings, if I can get you to buy into this and begin to put this into practice in your life, your life is just about to get better immediately. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen? But it says this, that what you think about is under your control. In other words, we need to discipline what we allow to come into our minds. We need to get up in the morning and say, I'm not going to think about ISIS. I'm not going to think about the good of the government, the bad of the government. I'm not going to think about the economy. I'm not going to think about my job being in jeopardy. I'm not going to think about anything that steals, kills, and destroys. The only thing I'm going to think about is what's good, perfect, Lovely, 
If there's any good report, here's what I'm going to say. If the doctor tells me that I've got six months to live, I'm going to tell him i got a better report than that. The Bible says with long life will he satisfy me, and he will show me his salvation. When the people come, and, and I was just talking to my teamster brother over here just a moment ago, we started drawing our pension, and we got a letter about three or four months after I started drawing, and they told us that the pension is broke. We don't know how much longer you're going to get your money. And so here's what I said. I got a better report than that. I work for the Lord God Almighty. He's got deep pockets and my pension will never run out. And whatever he has to do, if he has to put it in a fish's mouth, whatever he has to do, I'm always going to have the money that I need. Amen. I'm not depending on Social Security. I'm not depending on anything but Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I got a better report. I got some things that are true. The Bible says that if you continue in my word, then you'll be a disciple and you will know the truth and that truth will make you free. Amen. Yeah. Notice it didn't say set you free. It said it would make you free. Yeah. In other words, that is a word of authority. Yeah. When I was a child, my mom and dad made me go to church. There was no debate as to where I was going to be Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday. It was non-negotiable, <laughs> right? So what does that mean? It means that they impose their will upon mine. Are you ready to shout? When you know the truth of the Word of God, the truth of the Word will yeah. impose its will yeah. upon everything you need, and it will make you free. Yeah. In other words, it will force you to be free. Yeah. It will force whatever's in your life out of your life, and it will force freedom into your life. It will make you. He said, I said, be free. Yeah. So, it's only normal that we know that Satan is coming to try to get our minds off of whatever's lovely, whatever's just, whatever's pure, off of every good report, and get our mind on him and what he is trying to do in your life. Now, if you would, turn within your Bibles, please, over to the Acts, the 26th chapter. I want to do that, and then we'll go to uh, Matthew, the 6th chapter. All right? Am I, are you all right out there? Am I doing all right? Okay. All right. I'm a trying hard. I'm a trying to get you, to get you blessed. <clears throat> in other words, our hearts or our minds are in our control. I can't really go there right now for the interest of time, but Jesus told I left you peace, I gave you peace, not as the world gives you peace, do I give you peace. He said, now, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So what's he doing? He's putting the responsibility right back on the hearer, and he's telling you, I've given you all the tools that are necessary. I've given you the peace that passes all understanding. I've given you a peace that will allow you to lay down on a wet pillow on a sinking ship and take a nap. Come on. Amen? I've given you peace where you're thinking, I need to really be stressed out about this, but all of a sudden on the inside of me, I'm just as calm as a cucumber. That's the peace of God. What he's saying is this, I want you to take that peace and impose it. Yeah. Come on. Come on. It's a spiritual force. You have to impose that upon your trouble. When Jesus got up in the, and, and he was in that boat, we'll just go a little bit on this. Is that all right? Yeah. He got up in that boat. They said, do you not care that we, that we perish? That was a dumb question. Jesus wasn't wanting to die that day. <laughs> he said, no, I said, you know, I'm just depressed and I'm just ready to end it all. <laughs> you know, he, said, he, he should have said, you know, I knew we should have watched the Weather Channel before we left to find <laughs> out. We should have checked that local on the eights out here, but we forgot to do that. So therefore now we're all going to die. He didn't say that, did he? What was the words that came out of his mouth? Peace. Well, let me go say that on this side. He said, peace. Right? What did he do? He imposed his will through his peace upon those waves. Next time your checkbook acts like a raging tide, Open it up and go, peace. Amen. 
The next time you're worried, you're afraid. We got people, I know people that won't stay at home by themselves anymore. And when that all that's going on in the inside of you, you just need to stand up and go, peace. Be still. You'll impose. He said, let not your heart be troubled. I tell the devil every day, I'm not going to be afraid today. There's nothing you can do to make me afraid today. And then I get up out of the bed and look in the mirror and I go, oh my God. <laughs> but that's good fear. <laughs> Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Can I say it another way? Let not your heart be distracted. Let not your heart get off of that good report. Amen. I don't care what's going on in your life. You say, my marriage is in trouble. I got a good report for you. God will put that back together for you. I've got kids on drugs. God will get them off drugs for you. I need a better job. God will get you a better job. And that's all we need to think about. The job is coming. The healing is coming. The peace is coming. My children are coming. My old grouchy husband is coming. Look at Acts 26. Let's look in the second verse. First four words. Paul said, I think myself happy. Paul gets up every morning. He said, happy, happy, happy. And you know what I tell Christians all over the country? Be happy and please notify your face. We should never look like we sucked a big lemon. <laughs> Notify everyone around you. Today, I will be happy, and there's nothing you'll do about it. I think myself happy. Hallelujah. I'm happy. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. I am happy. Go with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter. We're just laying some foundations. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Am I boring you? Oh, no. All right. I'd rather walk over hot coals and do that. We've got enough boring church services. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that when I'm being live streamed. <laughs> Sorry. But if you're in a boring, boring church, get out now. That's a prophetic word for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look in the 21st verse of the 6th chapter of Matthew. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Did you see that? Let me share this with you. What's your treasure? It's whatever is most important to you. It's whatever has captured your attention. Whatever is most important to you and has captured your attention will capture your focus. It will capture your thoughts. It will capture your efforts. It will capture your pursuits. So wherever your treasure is, there will your mind or your thoughts be also. Did you see that? So then, we have got to decide what our treasure is. We have a choice as to what we treasure. We can treasure the world's report. We can treasure the things of the world. Or we can treasure God's report. Come on. Okay? Yeah. Let me share this with you. You can treasure God's report at a ball game. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Sure. Amen? You can treasure God's report at tumbling class. There are people that you encounter at ball games and tumbling that need your report. You can share your report wherever you are. I talk to people and they'll go, Brother Ken, I'm sick. I say, well, why don't we give God a shot at that? You'd be surprised how many people say, well, I didn't know he cared. Well, come here a minute. Let me get my hands on you. I'll show you how much he cares. Amen. You know what I'm saying? 
You can, you can, you can, you know, you can drive down the road to work. You can share God's report. You can ride down the road to work, and you can say, "Shila la makasham rosakim brahande." Amen. You don't have to think about how bad the day is going to be. You know, the first thing we need to do is get up and say, God, I don't care what my mind says. I want you to know I think myself happy that I got a job. Yeah. I think myself happy that I get to go to work. I, I think myself happy because I've got the health to go to work, yeah. that I've got the function, the motor skills, that I can get out there and do this today. And What I'm going to do today, Lord, is I'm going to do it with all of my might, all of my heart as unto you, and I'm going to be a light unto a sign crying, dying world today. Yeah. You don't have to walk down the road with a Christian flag singing onward Christian soldier. Whenever you have somebody talk to you about how bad it is, say, let me tell you how good it can be. Yeah. Come on. All right, what's this now. I, 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 I got to do this. Look in 22. It says the light of the body is the eye. Did you see that? You see, when you get responsibility put on the hearer's lap, that tells us not only do we control our hearts and our minds, we control what we look at. Come on. Come on. Amen? Yeah. We control that. I don't, I don't uh, refuse to watch Fox News because I'm against Fox News or CNN. I just don't want to look at it. Because I already know the outcome before we even get into the things. Amen? I don't care. I don't care. You know, it, it doesn't matter because my president is God. My vice president is Jesus. My Congress and Senate is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And let me tell you something what the Lord spoke to me. And I want to just share this with you. I was praying one day concerning a meeting and this just came up on the inside. I mean, it wasn't an audible voice. It just came up on the inside. Tell my people that I pay my child support. And he said, tell them I'm never late. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. If that didn't make you shout, I'll, I'll get some, I will, we will shout tonight before we quit. Watch this. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is single. Did you see that? If therefore your eye is single. In other words, a distracted eye looks here, looks there, looks all over the place, from one place to another. A distracted eye is just, is just concerned about everything. Look at here, look in there, look in here, look in there. But he said, if your eye is single. Now, I got this at 38,000 feet. Come in here. I've never seen that before in this life. If your eye is single. In other words, if your eye is focused on one thing. You know, it's amazing that the Bible says that we're dead to sin. That means, and I'm not making light of anybody that's passed away, any loved ones, but have you ever noticed that when you go to a funeral or a funeral home to visit the family and view the body, have you ever noticed there's one person in there that is not, not interested in what's going on at all? I'm not making light. Listen to me now. I'm not, I'm not making light. It hurts when you lose your loved one. I'm not making light of that. But have you noticed that when you're dead to the world, when, when you've passed away, you do not even recognize that anything else is going on? Amen? And you can go up there and you go, boo! Amen? I don't suggest you do that. In other words, well, I, you know, if you come to my funeral, you can say anything you want to about me. I'm going to love you anyway. But you understand, when you're dead to something, you don't interact with it. You don't notice it. You don't let it affect you. I remember there's a lot of times when the Satan wants to talk to me about fully persuaded ministries. He'll talk to me about, well, what are you going to do this week? What are you going to do this week? What are you going to do next month? I tell him, I'm dead to that. 
I'm dead to that. I'm alive unto God, and he can't handle it. Fully persuaded ministry shouldn't even be here. I'm dead to that. I'm unresponsive to that. Right? Unresponsive. You know what being dead is? It means unresponsive. Well, the first thing they say when somebody passes away, there's no response. Well, there's a reason for it. That's how we ought to be. You know, when, when the devil comes into our house, when he leaves and the demons say, what happened? He said, I don't know. They didn't respond. <laughs> Amen. And you know what he's going to tell the demons? We can't do anything where they don't respond. Because they have to allow us to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I went in there to do a home invasion, and they never responded. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. You know, you, he just comes into your house. You ought to just say, oh, it's you. Talk to the hand. Amen. Amen? I know we're laughing about it, but that's just the way it ought to be. Unresponsive. I will not respond to poverty. I will not respond to lack. I will not respond to sickness and disease. I will not respond to defeat. Somebody said, don't you know you're about to be defeated? I said, I haven't noticed. Because I can't quit noticing about how I'm about to get a victory here. Until I'm about to go over here. Amen. That's it. So then let me just let me share with you this. Let me make sure of what time it is. This is the most important piece of equipment of a traveling minister right here. The word distraction means this. It means to... Divert the attention of one from one point to another point. It means to divert the attention of one from one place to another place. There's a competition going on in our lives today. The competition, the world is competing for our attention. Satan is competing for our attention. And the Holy Ghost is competing for our attention. And whoever we allow, whatever our eye is single upon, is the, they, that will have an, uh, the, uh, whatever effect that that particular place where you have your eye on can bring into your life, you gave it the right to do that. Many people say this along to, uh, to me. They'll go, wonder why God let that happen. I said, he really didn't let that happen. He permitted it to happen. Because he made you a free moral agent. He allows you to put your attention on anything you want to, to fix it on. He allows it. And then when bad things happen, we want to blame him for it. It's amazing how Satan can come into your house, do something bad, leave you a note telling you God did it, and you'll believe it. I think it's amazing that it's easier to blame God for bad stuff than the real perpetrator. That's how good he is. That's how deceiving he is. He can come in and do something in your life and tell you God did it, and you'll go, well, maybe the Lord was just upset with me, or maybe the Lord is mad at me, or maybe this, or maybe that really wasn't, maybe God didn't, his will, that wasn't his will for me to have that. You know, you can't even get a tree knocked down on your house and get the insurance to pay for it. They said, well, it's, a, it's an act of God. Isn't that amazing? Like God is sitting up on, that, on the throne going, hey, Jesus, you see that tree right there? Yeah, you think I can hit it? Jesus said, you're pretty good. I believe you can do it. Why don't you shoot one down there and see if you can knock that tree down on Ken Cowan's house? I'm amazed that intelligent human beings will believe that. It's because we're distracted, aren't we? Let's go on a little farther. Look with me in Romans. Will you give me 
give me uh, five and let me take five. Will it be ten? Will that be all right? Okay, all right. I don't want to wear my welcome out, but but I, I, I I'm trying to get you to bear uh, to buy into this. I really want you to buy into this. If I can get you to focus on the right thing, I can I can help you change your life. Amen. I know I know it's not fun to get up at five o'clock in the morning and go to work. But it's a whole lot more fun than get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and wonder where we're we going to get my breakfast. All right, look in Romans, the first chapter, and let's look in the 11th verse here. For I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. Did you see that? In other words, Paul said, I didn't just come for an offering. I didn't just come for a meeting. What I've come for is to impart unto you a spiritual gift which will result in you being established. Can I say it another way? Which will result that if you buy into it and you make this yours, you will become focused on it. Your eye will become single. And from that moment on, you will be so, so focused and so, and, and so dedicated to that thing that you will even forget you're the bad that's going on in your life and the good will start coming and you'll say, wow, how did this all happen? Dear God, it just gets better and better and better. The word spiritual there means, it means belonging to the divine spirit. If we want anything in our lives, if we want to be touched in our lives, isn't it better to be touched by the divine spirit? Come on. Amen. Isn't that who we're trying to make contact with? The divine spirit? Come on. Right? Amen. It's the spirit of God, the same spirit that Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And it said that Lazarus came, came forth bound hand and foot in his grave clothes, that same spirit that was so powerful that when he talked to a dead man, his spirit came back into him. He was already bound hand and foot, could not walk, and that spirit was so powerful, it picked him up and floated him to the door so much that when he got to the door, Jesus said, now somebody loose him and let him go. Can you imagine that kind of power? That when you speak to your body, Satan releases your body. All symptoms release your body. All disease releases your body. And all of a sudden, health is restored in your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I'm talking about being made completely whole, perfectly whole. That word perfect means a level that there can be no improvement. In other words, you can be made so whole that there won't even be any evidence that sickness and disease ever existed in your body. Lord Jesus, why didn't we take a running spell right there? I'm talking about the devil made. You know, somebody said, oh, that'll leave a mark. If you're perfectly whole, that mark will go. Amen. People look at you and go, my goodness, you look so good. You don't never even look like you were sick. Well, it was the divine spirit. A spiritual gift. Look at this. The word gift, it means extraordinary power, distinguishing Christians from the world and enabling them to serve the church of God. In other words, what I came here to do was impart unto you the divine spirit that will distinguish you. In other words, when people look at you, they'll go, ah, uh, ah, uh, I don't know what's going on, but you got something I ain't got. That's because the eternal, extraordinary power of God has distinguished me from the world. From the ways of the world. I'm not bound by the ways of the world. I'm not bound by the things of the world anymore. Because there's been a spiritual gift imparted unto me. And now all I'm focused on is that divine spirit. And the gift that he's placed on the inside of me. Amen. You wake up in the morning you go. I'm not trying to get blessed. I am blessed. 
I'm not trying to get healed. I am healed. You see, so many Christians, oh my goodness, oh Lord Jesus, stop the clocks. <laughs> anyway, so many of, of God's people are, are operating or they're contending from a position of poverty, a position of lack, when we should be contending from a position of victory. We should be already victorious. We should contend from a position of victory and know this, that Satan is trying to take from us what is rightfully ours, what we've already been blessed with. You see, when you look at yourself as a child of God that is contending for the faith, but you're contending like, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. Instead of saying, Satan, take your hands off what's mine. Get your hands off my body, off my finances, off my family. Take your hands off. You are trespassing here. So we have to contend from a position of victory. Can I share that with you tonight? I promise I'll quit after this. Is that all right? We don't want those other re uh, church beating us to the restaurant. I know that. I understand that. What's this? Look at wrong, look in Ephesians, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Now, I don't, I don't know about y'all, so I'm going to go ahead and just say I, I did a good job because I've already made myself shout. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, I'm going to shout one more time. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not in a position of need. I'm not in a position of want. I'm in a position of blessing. Glory to God. I'm in a position of victory. And Satan, you're not going to take that away from me. Look in Ephesians chapter 1 real quick. <laughs> I got three more places and we'll go, okay? What's this? Ephesians, and that's a lie probably. But anyway, my plans... All right, to go to three more places. Look in Ephesians 1, verse 3. What does it say right there? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which hath. Now, I'm not an English major. By any, listen to me. This is why I don't listen to myself on tapes. Connie said, why do you not listen to yourself on tapes? I said, because I sound like a hick from the sticks. And Connie, bless her darling heart, she said, you are a hick from the sticks. <laughs> And I let her travel with me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I know, I have no choice. That's right. Who hath already been done, been ratified, been sealed by the blood of Jesus, who hath blessed us with just a few of his spiritual oh. blessings. Now, you know, he read the Passion Translation. I'm reading the Tobacco Patch Translation right now. <laughs> So he said, who hath blessed us with every, is that what he said? All. all. I'm sorry. Well, every all. Yes. I did a word study on that word all. It means all. Yes. With all spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Did you see that? So that tells me that I'm not in a position of lack. It tells me that I'm not deficient in anything. And if the, if the, if the divine, uh, uh, if, if the spiritual gift has been imparted, the divine spirit of God is on the inside of me, then there's nothing that I don't have. Well, I got a holy hush on that one. I thought, dear God, that ought to get at least two amens. In other words, every spiritual blessing every spiritual blessing that God possesses he oh when I when I worked at Yellow Freight and my precious brother he'll say right before I, 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 I retired from Yellow Freight they may OSHA came and made us put warning devices on our tractors when we back up they would go beep 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 so so nobody would get run over right well whenever God did this verse right here this verse right here he hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing. The first thing you need to hear is beep, beep, beep. You know what that is? That's God backing up the truck to dump the whole load. Yeah. <laughs> Daily loaded. Amen. I mean, every time you read that scripture, you'll hear beep, 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 beep. That's God backing the truck up. Dear God, the whole load's about to come. Come on.
every spiritual blessing. We're not in a position of need. And as a Christian, a child of God, we should never say, I need this. Whoa, there's a holy hush. <laughs> we should never let that come out of my mouth. Well, I need this. We need to say, I've already got this. Father, I'm going to make a withdrawal right now off of this spiritual blessing. And the divine spirit is working in my behalf right now. And he's bringing to me everything that I desire. One more, two more places. I want you to go to Ephesians 2 now. Just right down the street. Watch this now. Number five, even when we were dead in sin, God has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. What's this now? And he has raised us up together and made us. There's that word made again. You know what God said? I said, sit down. I said, get up here. I remember, you know, only if, I, if, I, if my mama told me this once, she told me this time, get over here and sit down. When you got saved and you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you know what God said to you? Get up here and sit down. down. And watch this. He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ where the blessing are. So we are in a position, whatever position Jesus is in. Let me say that on this side. Whatever position Jesus is in is the position I'm in. Amen? Yeah. So if he's seated at the right hand of the Father, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. So whatever he's got, I've got. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, Lord Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? So then go with me to Luke 13. And we're going to close, all right, for tonight. We'll get back into this tomorrow night. I hope this has done you good. Amen. Because I'm looking, at a, I'm looking at a group of wonderful, blood-washed saints of God, sons and daughters of God, Amen. who are dripping with the blood of Jesus, who are seated right at the right hand of the Father. And you're seated in the place of provision. Amen. The place of success. The place of victory. Amen. You're already there. You're not in a position of need, want, or lack. Come on. Come on. So we might as well get up in the morning and instead of thinking about our lack, we might as well get up and think about what we got. And don't let what you don't have distract you because what you don't have is on the way. Can't you hear it? Beep, 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 beep. Every morning when you get up, that's the first thing you ought to hear. If I'm going to be in a place of authority, I need to act like I'm in authority. Have you ever seen a policeman go, um, uh, do you think maybe, could you please, you know, let me see your license? <laughs> Have you ever seen a policeman do that? He looks at you and says, give me that driver's license and that registration right now. And I'm the one going, okay. <laughs> we need to get up in the morning and go, Satan, come here a minute. Come here to me, Satan. Today, you will not touch me. You will not touch my wife. You will not touch my children. You will not touch my house, my cars. You will not touch anything I own. You got that? I had a man walk up to me one time. He said, 
you do know that if you talk about the devil like that, he'll get you. Well, he ain't got me yet. Amen. All right, we got to close. Come on, let's go. Have you got anything out of this? Are you at least a little encouraged? Well, you come back tomorrow night, I'm going to put the cherry on top of the cake, all right? Hallelujah. My daddy told me a long time ago, he said, don't give them all one night. You know what my daddy used to tell me? Wherever you go, don't go over 45 minutes, you'll just be blessing yourself. My daddy was my mentor. I listened to my daddy. My daddy, I, still, I refer to my daddy all the time. My daddy said this, my daddy said that. He didn't think I was listening. I fooled him. <laughs> it was like, like E.F. Hutton, speak to me, daddy. <laughs> Amen? He told me, he said, Ken, you don't have to preach the whole Bible every sermon. He said, one word from God can change your life. Watch this. Let's go to Luke 13. We'll, we'll, I promise we'll close. It's okay to laugh a little bit at church, isn't it? Oh, yeah. All right, well, I hope y'all are not those unlaughable ones. <laughs> a lot of churches on the outside of the door, and you walk in, they say, no laughing. <laughs> you know, a lot of places you go in, they say, no food or drink. Some places you go in, no food or drink or laughing. <laughs> Let's go on. Oh, you're going to get some nasty letters now, Pastor Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize to you over that. I'll look to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, that, that email address is Christian, faithchristianfellowship.com. <laughs> All right, watch this. I want to do, let's go. From a position, what did I say? When you're in a position of authority, when you're in a position of victory, you'll never get distracted. It will become a way of life. It will become a way of thinking. And then it will become, it, will, it actually, it will become it will change you who you are into that. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. All right, watch this. I, I, we're going to close right here. In the, in the 10th verse of the 13th chapter of Luke, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. <laughs> Did you see that? Wouldn't that be good to get Jesus to say that to you? Guess what? He already has. <laughs> she was in a position of lack, but she's under the old covenant. We're in the new covenant We've been raised up together. She had to hunt Jesus up. We don't have to hunt him up. We're seated right next to him. Come on. Hey, man. We don't have to get up there and go, oh, I wonder where Jesus is today. <laughs> hey, man. He says, I'm right here. I'm right where I've always been. Well, you missed a chance to shout right there, by the way. Okay, watch this. Here we go. It said he laid his hands on her, and immediately, did you see that? You know what I'm amazed of? When you operate from a position of lack, you never expect immediately. You know, when you operate from a position uh, of distraction, you don't ever expect suddenly Immediately, you're just hoping. I mean, it's all almost like playing the lottery. You're just hoping you're going to hit today. Amen? Yeah. And when you're operating from that position, then you really don't have a lot of confidence in the outcome mm -hmm. because you're so distracted with this. Well, now, Brother Ken, you know it runs in my family. You ever heard that one? It runs in my family. And guess what Satan has figured out? He's figured out how to get into your business. And if you don't stop it, he'll get in your kids' business. And if they don't stop it, he'll get into your grandkids' business. That's why when you go to a doctor and the second question, the first one is, do you have insurance? The second one is, what's your family history? Right? Satan has figured out how to get into your bloodline. 
And people will be distracted with that. And they'll go, well, now, I don't know of God. They're, when you operate from a position of, of lack, you're going to say, well, I don't know if God will do this or not. I do know this. It runs in my family. Can I ask you this? Whose family are you in? Come on. Are you in the family of God? Yes. Right? If you, are you a child of God? Yes. I've got some great news for you. It don't run in that family. Actually, just like this immediately right here, it runs from that family. Hey, You know when Satan sends sickness in your house, he'll tell us there, no, I don't know how you're going to be received in there, but uh, they, they're going to run you out. You're not going to run in them. So he, she said immediately she was made straight and glorified God. So the, the ruler of the synagogue got upset about it. He said there's six days in which men ought to work. Let people come in those days to be healed, but not on the Sabbath. Here's shouting ground. Now, if this don't make you shout, I'll get you tomorrow night. Watch this now. You better put your seatbelts on now. I, don't, I might even shout a little bit here. Is that all right? Watch this now. Then Jesus answered and said, you hypocrite. You see, in this politically correct world, now we'd have to say, you nice person. Yes, you, you nice, nice person. That lie you just told was so wonderful. Thank you for telling us that lie. And thank you for being someone that you really are not and trying to be a hypocrite. We, we love hypocrites now. We used to not like hypocrites, but now you're welcome. In fact, in our church, we have a hypocrite section because we don't want to make you feel like that you're being left out. So you come on over here and sit in the hypocrite section right there, and we'll make sure you have a bottle of water. Is it cold enough in here for you? Is everything okay? We need hypocrites in our church because we want to be politically correct. We certainly wouldn't want to offend you. It's amazing. Jesus was not politically correct. He was supernaturally correct. He said, you hypocrite. Don't you have an ox in your stall on the Sabbath day? Don't you loose it and bring it out and let it drink? And you're telling me that that ox is more important than this woman? You've got more love for an ox? Isn't that amazing? We've got more love now in America for our enemies than we do Americans? You want to talk about hypocrites? I better hush now. I'm about to get up on my soapbox here. So you're telling me that that ox is more important? than a woman that's been in this condition for 18 years? What's this now? What's what he says? He said, Ought not this woman be whole? Oh, I thought I'd get you going there. You know what you ought to do every morning when you get up and go to the throne room? You ought to say, Father, ought I not be healed? Shouldn't I be provided for? Shouldn't I be victorious today? You see, when you operate from a position of victory, that's how you talk. This ought not be happening in my life, Lord. I ought to be blessed. Well, what gave her the right? What's this? Ought not this woman... Being a daughter of Abraham? Ought not this woman who has a covenant right, who's a in covenant relationship with God, who the blood of Jesus has covered this woman, and because she's in covenant relationship, ought not she be healed? If anybody in this building ought to be healed, it should be her. You got a right to go into the throne room and go, Father, anybody that needs to be blessed, it ought to be me. 
Because I'm a child, I'm a daughter, a son of Abraham. That's my ticket in. I love that. That's my password. Amen. Watch this. Whom Satan has bound, lo these 18 years. Ought not she be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? This poor woman was distracted for 18 years. She forgot who she was, where she was seated, and the provision that being a daughter of Abraham provided her. But thank God, one day, Jesus came and clarified that. And he made her understand, honey, you never were in a position of lack. But you just didn't know where you were. Now you do. And from now on, because you're a daughter of Abraham, you should never, ever be bound again. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Well, I hope you got something out of that. I just want to give you a piece of advice. This is free. Get into God's word and find out what God's word would say and become fully persuaded that what he's promised, he's able also to provide. Amen? Amen? Let's stand up. Let's go home. I'm sorry I went 10 minutes over. Hallelujah. Y'all better be glad. It's just 8 o'clock my time. We still got another hour or so. Amen? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I have pastors tell me all the time, said, Brother Ken, we have you every year. We love you so much, but please, would you buy you a clock? <laughs> That's what they tell me. Would you please buy a clock? I just want to say this to you tonight. There's probably some people here, and you are distracted, and your stomach is in a knot. You don't know what to do. You're at your wit's end. And instead of things looking better, they look like they're getting worse. And you come and you've gone before Lord, the Lord in the nighttime when everybody else is in bed and you've said, Lord, how much longer do I have to wait for this? But the Lord would say unto you, stop looking at your situation from a position of lack. Look at yourself like I see you, says the Lord. When you begin to see yourself as I see you, you will open up astounding power and might. You will create an atmosphere where I can work effectively in your life. Do you not remember that when they were in the tabernacle that there had to be incense perpetually burning? The reason that was for there, therefore, said the Lord, was for a perpetual praise. There was an atmosphere that was created there, says the Lord, that I could work in unhindered. And if I can get you to move out of your position of lack and into the position where I have placed you, then I can create an atmosphere where I can come and do for you exactly what it is that you desire me to do. So work on that. Focus on that. Put your eye on that and determine, says the Lord, that my eye from this day forward will be on the Lord God Almighty. And I will praise Him and give Him glory and I will move myself into the place of victory. And then my God will work and give me victory in every circumstance in my life. Because, my child, you ought to have that. Because you are a son or daughter of Abraham and I do not forget my covenant. And I will do for you exactly what I promised, says the Lord of hosts. So if you're here tonight and you want me to lay my hands upon you, add my faith to yours that the Lord God will come through for you in a mighty way you come, we'll do that. I believe God with you. We'll go big tonight and we'll believe for it all. Yes. Yes. You ought to have it. Amen.
Say this with me. It's mine. I have a covenant. That's my password. And I ought to have it. All right. Pastor Paul, thank you so much for letting me come. I appreciate it. Sister Andy, thank you. We love you guys. I just pray you were, you were blessed. I pray that you were encouraged. You come back tomorrow night and we'll beat the devil's brains out. Amen? Bless you. Come on. It's good. Always a good word. The pressure always comes, don't it? The enemy brings the pressure. I was reminded, I was sitting there and I was thinking about that, what I preached about two weeks ago about Nebuchadnezzar. He always turns up the heat. It's just pressure. Try to get you to turn. Amen. What'd they say? We won't answer you on this matter. Our God will deliver us. Our God will deliver us. Our God will. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together today.